Alright ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to you about the new Meta Sword. Some of you may have seen my previous video in the past covering Bequest being extremely, extremely criminally underrated because Fallen Guillotine basically dominated the game for like 18 months. In case you don't know what the hell Bequest is, here you go. Now, today I want to talk to you about a new sword, and it happens to also be an Arc Sword, but this time it's in the same family tree as Fallen Guillotine being a Vortex Frame. Now this sword is from the new dungeon, Grasp of Avarice. So Hero of Ages is the same type of sword as Fallen Guillotine, however, it has some unique perks to it. So uh, as Fallen Guillotine, basically you want Relentless and Whirlwind to get maximum DPS, however Whirlwind has been nerfed recently to needing 10 stacks instead of 5 to get maximum damage. Meanwhile this sword has damage perks, but also has a unique perk combination that makes this sword pretty nuts. That combination that I'm talking about is Unrelenting, and chain reaction. Now before you start laughing, saying, haha, unrelenting, good joke, uh, actually, this perk is very, very good on a sword. Basically, it's a baby devour for every two kills that you get. Getting two kills in PvE is not exactly very hard. On top of that, chain reaction basically means you get a kill, you get explosive rounds surrounding you, killing other enemies. Now this sword can also roll a tireless blade, relentless strikes, and this column can roll assassin's blade, which is for damage if you want. And one for all, also a damage perk, in case you don't want Chain Reaction. But this build, right here, Jagged, Swords Master, Armor Lantern, Chain Reaction, I think is the quote-unquote god roll for this sword. And let me show you why. So before I go in here and uh, show you some kills, I just want to note some statistics. This sword and Fong Guillotine are tied in both Swing Speed and Impact, which is 46 and 60. That is the second highest impact for a Legendary Sword, not counting... Crown Splitter because, well, it has the swing speed of a Rusty Sponge, which immediately takes out of the discussion, not to mention it's only tied to Titans only. The only other sword that has a higher impact than these two is Bequest, which in its own right is pretty damn good. Now the difference between Bequest and this is essentially the M2 attack, so this sword can clear trash mobs really, really well, but on top of that, if you have to deal with a chunkier enemy like a Knight or a Captain, it could also do that too. So let me just kill these guys. So you see right there, I'm healing. Like I said, baby devour. And you can stack actual devour with this to make it even more stupid. Now here are some more trash mobs. And now, if I want, I'm going to go in and bam. I just killed the knights with the M2. And guess what? The M2 also triggers chain reaction. And now everything's freaking dead. So you can see the utility here between getting trash mob kills and then getting kills on knights captains champions orange bars whatever it may be look how simple and easy it is all i do is press m1 and i watch everything explode around me just like that so as you can see this sword is pretty insane when it comes to just general content anything that has a ton of trash mobs so you can use this in regular raids dungeons master nightfalls the only reason i wouldn't recommend using it in gm nightfalls is because just using swords in gms is very uh, risky and most of the time does not work out but hey you can run it there too if you play careful that's up to you so like I mentioned it's basically tied with guillotine in statistics overall however <clears throat> guillotine lost its uh, edge if you will in war one blade making it longer to proc an x10 to get max damage so this sword can do trash mobs and damage and well I mean best of both worlds what can I say now I'm sure someone's going to bring it up, and I'll just mention it right away. I'm not comparing this to Lament. Obviously, Lament is strictly a DPS sword. It does more damage than everything for obvious reasons, and it's an exotic sword, so it should be doing more damage than everything else. However, in most cases, at least currently, your exotic is going to something like Arbalest, Sleeper. You know, you're using fusion rifles to take advantage of the seasonal perk with extra damage, not to mention there's other things like Galahorn that you would want to put in the exotic slot. So that makes this more viable in the event that you want to run, let's say, this, and then you want Arbalist, or maybe you want to run Vex, depending on the Nightfall, you know, you want an unstoppable gun, whatever it may be. So there's a lot of utility here, versatility, whatever it may be. And uh, I just think this sword is very underrated right now. It is extremely solid overall. Like I mentioned, it can roll damage perks if you want damage perks, one for all, Assassin's Blade. So, there you go. I hope you try this sword out, or maybe you already have it in your vault. It is really good, really fun, and uh, don't sleep on it like people slept on Bequest. And that's all I have for this one. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't forget to follow and sub. It really does help, and it's free. Just hit that bell. Hit it! Also, we stream daily on Twitch, by the way.
ripping up from Witch Queen. I'll catch you there. Take it easy.